The bloody war between Israel and Hamas rattling nerves across the globe, with one island really feeling the heat. We've been actively monitoring the Chinese military using various forms of intelligence. Talk with Iran to prevent a wider war, and Israeli envoys plead to China, putting the regime's stance on the Hamas war to the test. Tensions take the sky in Taiwan, Chinese fighter jets soaring above the strait as a warning to nearby U.S. warplanes. And a rare trip overseas by the Russian president, but where is he going? A look at Beijing's Belt and Road Summit and why India might be absent. What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. As the war between Israel and Hamas rages on, Taiwan is on high alert. The island's defense minister noting one major lesson from the conflict. Intelligence work is really important because only by having intelligence can we respond in advance at preventive war with China. Hamas, one of the terrorist groups that controls Palestine, launched a surprise attack on Israel Saturday. The death toll on both sides has blown past 1,000. And it's sparking discussions about why Israeli intelligence failed to detect the attack beforehand. Back to Taiwan, Defense Minister Chiu noted the island has set up a task force to monitor the situation. Taiwan is currently under the shadow of a potential Chinese invasion. Beijing sees Taiwan as part of China, despite the island never having been under the Chinese regime's rule. Meanwhile, Taiwan is critical for America's safety. It sits on a chain of islands that prevents China from launching submarine-based nuclear attacks against the U.S. The island also makes over 90 percent of the world's most advanced microchips, used in America's fighter jets, missiles and other defense systems. The Chinese regime has been building airfields and stationing fighters and drones on its coastline. That's just 100 miles from Taiwan. The island's annual defense report says Beijing is looking to gain superior air power over Taiwan. We've been actively monitoring the Chinese military using various forms of intelligence. Taiwan has been boosting its defense capabilities, though former Australian Prime Minister says the island should take that even further, citing Israel as an example. Taiwan's future is uniquely central to global peace and security, and we all understand that that future is under constant threat. Israel's annual defense budget makes up over 4 percent of its GDP, while Taiwan's budget next year is over 2 percent of its GDP. Amid the ongoing bloodshed in Israel, an urgent plea to Beijing from Israel's ambassador to China on Thursday. Talk with Iran and stop the escalation. How is China responding? Let's take a look. Without naming the attackers, China on Thursday condemned the killing of civilians in the Hamas war. And that's Beijing's first public contact with Israel since it came under attack by the terrorist group last week. Just hours before, the Israeli ambassador to China called on Beijing to negotiate with Iran to end the conflict. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan condemned Iran's, quote, deep, dark role in funding Hamas on Tuesday. They have provided training, they have provided capabilities, they have provided support, and they have had engagement and contact with Hamas over years and years. The same day, the Chinese foreign ministry announced new civilian casualties in the attacks. Three Chinese nationals have been confirmed dead in the conflict, with two others missing and several injured. That's as China's silence about Hamas attacks on Israel raises concerns about its role in Middle East politics. Beijing has expressed its support for the establishment of a Palestinian state. When Israel asked China to officially denounce the attacks, Beijing refused. Palestinian officials thanked the Chinese regime for its long-term support of Palestine and said Palestine trusts the Chinese Communist Party. China's silence is because China wants to show that they are a friend of the Muslim people, even though they're committing uh, genocide in Xinjiang. Out of 49 Muslim-majority countries globally, 30 are part of Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. 
China analyst Antonio Graceffel says nearly all of them remained silent on Beijing's genocide in Xinjiang. He adds, China's position on the Hamas war is likely to be part of a long-term play. They're building points, they're building、uh, cachet with the other Arab states, saying, "Look how, how we support you." So they're hoping to get all those guys onto China's side, and then that would leave just the United States and Israel on the other side. Beyond that, Saudi Arabia, plus countries in Africa and Latin America, all appear sympathetic to the Palestinian side. Gaining favor in these regions may offer China an opportunity, becoming an alternative partner for those countries instead of the U.S. On the other side, China's attitude toward Israel could come at a high price. Microchips are among the most popular Israeli exports to China. That trade is crucial for China as it grapples with American export curbs, which aim to cut off Beijing's access to cutting-edge technology. A warning from Beijing: the Chinese military sent fighter jets toward the Taiwan Strait Thursday as a U.S. Navy patrol plane flew over the water. The U.S. Navy said the flight aimed to demonstrate its commitment in a free and open Indo-Pacific, and that it's capable of anti-submarine missions. The move angered Beijing, and the Chinese military allegedly sent out its own fighters to monitor the U.S. Navy. It also rebuked the flight as "quote public hype." Congressman Michael Waltz told NTD's Capitol Report host Steve Lance that I think we need to move to clarity not only for our allies but、uh, for our adversaries and also for the American people.、Uh, our leadership needs to begin explaining why、uh, Taiwan is so important and what the world will look like. Uh, if China is in a position to control 50 percent of of global GDP, back to the Taiwan Strait, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said conflict in the disputed waterway would be devastating. The Strait plays a critical role in global trade, maritime transportation, and global security. Both the U.S. and Taiwan acknowledge it as part of international waters. Beijing disputes that claim and considers it Chinese territory. Out with the old, in with the new. At least for Beijing, that's as a new contender for China's defense minister steps onto the field. General Liu Jinli heads the Chinese military's Joint Staff Department. It's tasked with directing Beijing's planning and combat operations. If he does take up the post, he'll succeed current defense minister Li Shanfu. The official has been at the center of recent speculation. Reports say he's been out of the public eye for more than six weeks, with no explanation from Beijing. He's believed to be under internal investigation and could become the second Chinese defense minister to be removed since July. Worth noting, Washington sanctioned Li in 2018 over a weapons deal with Moscow. According to Reuters, sources say Beijing will likely announce the change by the end of this month, ahead of a multi-nation security meeting. A wolf in sheep's clothing. China has secured another term in the United Nations Human Rights Council, though it secured the lowest number of votes in the Asia Pacific group. Here's more. The UN General Assembly on Tuesday elected 15 new members to its human rights body. China, Japan, Kuwait, and Indonesia were contesting for the four open slots for the Asia region. Despite concerns of human rights violations, China was re-elected for the sixth time with 154 out of 192 votes. Cuba was also elected to the body. Member nations that are truly defending human rights are becoming a rarity. Most of them are using the council as a platform to defend themselves, so that their human rights record will not be criticized, condemned, or sanctioned. Last week, New York-based NGO Human Rights Watch urged the UN to deny membership to authoritarian regimes such as China and Cuba. The organization cited last year's report by the United Nations, suggesting China committed crimes against humanity by detaining Uyghur minorities in the Xinjiang region. Aside from China and Cuba, Russia's bid to the council was denied due to its invasion of Ukraine last year. Sam Wang, NTD News. Known as a debt trapped in the West, China's Belt and Road Initiative is set to host its 10th forum next week. In addition to close allies Russia and Iran, developing countries in Latin America and Africa will also attend. Indian press source The Hindu says New Delhi is likely to skip the summit. If that happens, it would mark the third year of India's absence from the event. Ahead of the opening, China's foreign ministry called the Belt and Road a win-win. The project has more than a hundred and fifty countries, plus thirty international bodies on board. 
That said, some of those nations seem to regret signing on. Italy is one of them. The country's current administration has been looking to opt out of the scheme. Italy is the only G7 nation to have signed on to the initiative. First of all, China was able to increase their exports to Italy. And this is the main reason why the country is leaving. Aside from the geopolitical issues, is that, that Italy has absolutely not seen any economic benefit from joining the BRI. And for uh, China, it was a huge win. You know, it was, a, it was a, an inroad into Europe. China's exports to Italy have increased 51 percent, where Italy has only hit half that number. China's foreign direct investment has also dropped to one twentieth of its share from before Italy joined the Belt and Road. In other regions, Beijing has granted large loans to developing countries through the initiative. But since then, many have been unable to repay their Chinese debt. In exchange, Beijing takes control of the infrastructure and strategic assets instead. One of them, Sri Lanka, now leases a major deep water port to Beijing on a 99-year contract. That's after it failed to pay off its $7 billion debt to China. More on Sri Lanka's debt troubles. The country has struck a deal with a state-owned Chinese bank looking to tackle $4.2 billion of its outstanding loan. Sri Lanka is facing a major financial crisis. While news of the help from the Export-Import Bank of China came as a surprise, this deal will help Sri Lanka get past the first review of an international monetary fund program. According to Sri Lanka's finance ministry, it's an important step toward getting a second tranche, about $334 million from the IMF. That's a security that can be split into smaller pieces and sold off to investors. China is the largest bilateral creditor for Sri Lanka. In the coming weeks, the two sides will work on formalizing the terms of the debt treatment. An update on the violent car crash of the Chinese consulate earlier this week. San Francisco officials identified the driver Thursday. He was shot and killed by police after ramming a vehicle into the consulate's visa office. Here's what we know so far. 31-year-old San Francisco man Jan Yuan Yang has been identified as the driver who crashed a car into the Chinese consulate on Monday. Yang was shot and killed by San Francisco police after crashing a car into the visa office. San Francisco's Office of the Chief Medical Examiner told AP News in an email Thursday that they have no additional information to disclose. A witness told reporters he was yelling about the Chinese Communist Party as he exited the car, bleeding from his head. Police have not disclosed how the shooting unfolded or how many officers fired. There were no reports of any other injuries. The incident drew condemnation from the White House and Chinese government. That's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Rounds of Israeli airstrikes raining down on the Gaza Strip. As crossfire continues between Israel and the Iran-backed terrorist group Hamas, Jerusalem is sending out a request to China. Talk with Iran and stop the escalation. Beijing was quick to issue a statement regarding the conflict, but made no mention of Hamas. What role is China playing in the conflict? And will the regime try to broker a peace deal like it did with Iran and Saudi Arabia? To discuss, we sat down with Dennis Wilder, professor of Asian studies at Georgetown University. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epic TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.